Welcome back to another Geek What video and today I'm bringing you something very very different to my normal style of video Something that many people have been uh, asking for and requesting for for quite a while now So I'm going to address that and that is how I do some of my cool animations So I've got a new composition set up This is a 3840 by 2160 composition which is a 4k resolution at 60 frames per second as you can see down here so if we click on the composition that we've made up here, you can see uh, all the settings for this composition and we're going to open that composition down here. I'm then going to drag in my Twitter logo white right from my left monitor uh, that you can't see and I'm going to put that into the parts bin for, um, for this composition. I'm then going to drag that onto the timeline and I'm going to... Uh, going to not worry about that for the moment. I just want to add some text in, so um, so at Geekwatt, which is my Twitter tagline, so just type that super quickly. Now, uh, you can you can have different fonts if you want, you know, I, I use uh, Futura for my um, for my videos, Futura and Futura PT. Futura looks alright, but I'm going to stick with my usual Futura PT for this video, just because it matches with everything else on the channel. I want my Twitter tagline to come in somewhere um, along along the middle, purely because the bottom left is the conventional place, and if it's in the middle, it tends to draw attention a little bit more. So I'm going to draw this Twitter logo off uh, off the screen as well, and I'm going to find um, I'm going to find the middle uh, roughly here as well. So if we go into the View tab, and we can also show some guides, snap to guides, and we can also lock the guides, uh, which just makes getting things in the middle just a little bit easier. But for the moment, this will do, and I can sort the middle out at a later stage. So this is my Twitter logo, I'm going to transform my Twitter logo, and as you can see it's, yeah, that, that's not looking good if I try and transform that down, it's, I'm going to absolutely mess it up. So I'm going to hit Command Z to undo what I've just done, give it a minute to load, and then I'm going to start resizing again, and once I've started moving like this, I'm going to hold Shift, and that will keep the proportions uh, what they need to be. I'm going to drop that there in, in, in line with this, and then we're going to, I'm going to shove those around about, around about what I think to be the middle, which is here, as I said, we can clean that up later on down the line. I'm then going to enable 3D for both of these, uh, which allows me to add a camera in as well. Uh, so, yeah, we just sort of drag that Twitter logo down a little bit just because it just looks a little bit uh, sort of obnoxious at the moment. And I might actually put that to um, might actually put that to to the left as well of the um, of the Twitter handle and make the Twitter handle a little bit bigger. So maybe maybe 200 maybe uh, 190 will do for now. I'm going to drop that into here, and then I'm going to. Um, but as I said, enable the 3D on both of these and move these just to the right just a little bit uh, more. Now I'm going to go into my um, my my timeline uh, where I've got all my different things. I'm going to do new and then I'm going to add a camera in. A camera, you've got several settings you can do. The main the main setting is one or two no camera and you can also enable depth of field. But I'm going to keep it all on the default. This is going to be my, uh, my camera. I'm, it's not going to be camera one. I don't have plan on having any other cameras in this video. So that's going to be, uh, that's going to be there. You don't want to put that at the bottom. Keep it at the top and I like to colour code uh, my all my things on my timeline here so you can see easily distinguish which one is which so i'm going to change the twitter logo to an aqua or a blue because twitter is normally associated with blue i'm going to change my at geek what tagline uh, to something like a gray if i can do a gray um maybe uh, not sandstone that's kind of uh, ugly these this doesn't really matter it just helps uh, if you're um sort of referring to it and just want to see sort of what's going on uh, it's got some funny names for things but cyan should be all right for that and for the camera i'm going to go with red which is what I always do for the camera. I'm going to move the text a little bit closer to the Twitter logo and then we're going to start playing around with some of the camera settings. So I'm not going to be doing anything major with the camera. If you go, if you open up the camera settings and go into camera options, uh, there's pl there's absolutely loads of stuff you can you can zoom in, you can zoom out. I'm going to just hit Command Z or Control Z if you're on a Windows machine at any time to redo the current action. You can change the aperture as well if you want. Uh, that isn't really going to change m m anything for this composition just because that aperture is all about light and there isn't really any light in this composition. But if you go to transform that's where things really start getting interesting and we collapse the camera options you can see we've got our x rotation here and if we rotate our x rotation you can see you can see it starts to it starts to go up and then we can we can bring it down and then drop it back down the bottom uh, if we like and this is how i did my trailer as well so i can also change the y rotation here uh, to sort of anything i want so i can bring it on from one side take it off to the other and that's one of the things i'm looking at for this video with perhaps doing and then you've also got this rotation which is just going to you know, you can make the bird fly if you want. Uh, you can maybe have some fun with that. And maybe I'll mess around with that at the end of the video. But for the moment, the Y rotation looks like something that I want to mess around with and looks like the one the one for me. So I'm going to go over here and you can see I've zoomed in my composition. It doesn't really need to be this long. So I'm going to go into the settings, change the um, the duration to more like and more like five seconds, um, just because, you know, that's a bit more or 10 seconds, uh, just a bit more easier to work with and less intensive for the computer. So I'm going to zoom in and you can see here uh, I've, I've gone 
for 60 frames per second, so you've got 0 seconds, 1 second, 2 seconds, and 3 seconds, which is more than enough for what we need to do at the moment. I'm going to turn on uh, my keyframes, which is going to automatically create a keyframe. However, I don't want that there. I'm Normally, things tend to come on from the left and go to the right, so I'm going to change this across to, to the left. I'm not going to change uh, that figure, just the uh, right, this one here. So you can see my blue outline, and that's where the edge of my text is, and I'm gonna, I've am gonna i got a keyframe recorded for that. About a second, maybe a bit bit less than that, I'm, I want to bring this back round to here. I'm going to take it way back down to zero, and that's where we want it to end up. You can see here that this, that this if we uh, if we take it up to a second, um, if we go up to a second and bring that keyframe to the second, then that's going to allow us more easily to line up the in and out duration. I want to keep it there for about about two seconds which will take us to the three second mark. I'm going to click this button here as it won't automatically create a keyframe has there been no automatic change. If I go if I went straight to my five my four seconds sorry and then added the animation out as soon as it had come in it would then extremely slowly go out and that's not something that I want to happen. So I'm going to go over to four seconds I'm going to hit because um, it's, it's already recording it's already going to create the keyframe and I'm going to bring this out to here. It's important that you don't you don't go and put it way too far. You can see the blue outline appears when it comes off the canvas you want the blue outline just to come off the canvas otherwise uh, it's got a further travel distance even though you can't see it so it will go as far as you move it so if you go and pump this dial up by ridiculous amounts it will go that far and uh, and that's not what that's not what you want so i'm going to um going to command z and go back to where we were before which is about 39 uh, degrees and i'm just going to just going to see if i can get it any closer no no and then that's where it comes off at 39 degrees if I then go to here and I select all of these and press F9, then After Effects will do some magic and make everything look a little bit better. You can see it will come on into the middle, stay there for a moment, and then uh, and, and in a second it will go off again, which isn't obnoxious, doesn't get in the way, but it certainly gets the message across to the viewer uh, that I want you to follow my Twitter, which you can follow at GeekWatt, by the way. Links, as always, in the description below. Now I want to add um, something, something different to... Um, something different while it's here. It looks a little bit boring while it's here and the animation on isn't particularly interesting and it stops very abruptly. It's sort of going, going, stop. If you get on a bus, the bus doesn't instantly stop at the bus stop. It slows down, breaks and stops. And that's something that I'm going to be doing now. So I'm going to select these two keyframes particularly because this is where it's off, this is where it's on, and this is the transition period in between. Select both of those keyframes and click the graph editor button. Now this may be in a different place in different versions of the software, but there's nothing I can do. So it does look extremely weird to begin with, which I can only apologize for. And it is really quite confusing. You can see I've got all of these options selected. I don't want all of these options selected. Instead, just the Y rotation. And this makes things a little bit easier to understand. Now, because it's not scale, because the scale would go from the bottom at zero all the way to the top at 100 or 150 percent, whatever you'd set, this is a bit more confusing. So this this bridge here is your left, and then this is when it's resting. So if we if we just sort of play it, it'll give you an easy idea. If you look at this curve, that's when it's coming on. So we go from left to right. The flat is when it's here, and then the right, and then the uh, the sort of the the right. The left to right and going down is the um, is the going off. So this is when it's here, and we don't want to worry about when it's here. We can sort of do stuff with that later on. Now, if we select, just click this line here uh, because we selected those two keyframes previously. It will just select this block. Now you can see here we've got these two yellow handles. I want it to accelerate off the line quite quickly, and then I want it to slow uh, um, st st slow and stop uh, much faster. So I'm going to move this yellow handle. It is important um, that you, you you do keep the yellow handle straight as to where it was before, because if you do slope it down it will do other things elsewhere but i'm going to i'm going to put it in this um in this the corner box here the transform box and that and then we'll give, we'll give it a bit of a quick playback we're going to let it render out there we go and then um and then we'll have another watch the i i'm i don't like that and i, I think i've done it the wrong way around yeah i have so i'm going to in, instead this time go for the bottom handle which will slow it down and as it comes in maybe that's a bit of extreme but we'll um we'll soon find out there we go that's a little bit extreme so i'm going to i'm going to move this yellow handle back again if we hit command z it will take it back to where it was i'm going to instead this time take it into halfway between um, the very left and the uh, middle transform handles there we go and you can see it now slowly slowly comes on when it gets there i'm going to do the exact same thing for this one over here however this time it's going to be um perhaps not so important and not so necessary i'm going to try doing it with the top handle see if that looks better than doing it with the bottom handle because you're not going to see the demise shall we say of it coming off 
too much. So that looks all right. I'm going to try with the bottom handle and see if that makes any significant difference. It may just make it so that it's faster coming off, which isn't necessarily what we want. So yeah, I prefer it with the top handle. Just personal preference, I think it looks a little bit better. And I've lined that up with the black line in the midpoint between the middle handle and the far right handle, just as I did with the left and the middle handle on the previous one. So I'm going to escape out the graph editor. And then I'm going to play what we've got if I let it render out first because it will be a little bit slow while it's rendering and then we can play it back from the beginning. So if I go here and play it back from the beginning, we can see that looks that looks really quite nice to me. And then and yeah, and that, it certainly it certainly puts the puts the message across. As I said, you can play around with some different 3D settings. And if I have a little bit of a look of how this thing looks, um, we could we, we can uh, we can sort of investigate and see how it's going to look when it's done. So I'm going to drag some Need for Speed footage into the parts bin over here, and I'm going to add a Gaussian blur to it as well in a second. So we drop that onto the timeline, put that at the back, and then I'm going to scale this up to the 4K resolution. So if I just sort of drag that to there, that's perfect. And then go to the effects. This isn't necessary. This is just sort of to see uh, how it's all going to look in the end. So drag that onto there and then go into the effect controls. Change the Gaussian blur to 72. And then we can watch this text effects back. Sorry if I've kind of deafened you all there with the uh, the sound of need for speed. So uh, if I just take the volume off on there, we can we can play it again. You can see that definitely gets the message across. And, uh, and I think that definitely looks very, very nice indeed. So hopefully this will give you a bit of an idea of 3D text effects in Adobe After Effects. If you have found this video helpful, I know it's a little bit different, drop a like rating, make sure to subscribe, and we'll see you as always in the next Geek Watt video.